Hey guys, welcome back to Maxplained Dawn of War Unification. Today's faction guide features the Black Templar, which aren't really black here because of my color scheme, but nevertheless, the Black Templar are melee based or melee. Shut up, please. Uh, melee focus Space Marine chapters that are uh, kind of loosely based on the German Templars and whatnot, the uh, Central European Templars. Um, yeah, they do their crusade against everything unnatural, like basically every Space Marine does, but they have all the theme of uh, the Crusaders. Um, they have quite a new uh, unique faction behavior in that they have righteous seal on their um, infantry and heroes. I, I will talk about that when I talk about the units. And the problem with understanding them is that a lot of the mechanics and what upgrades do and whatnot is not really explained or good enough explained or even explained at all. So. Yeah, uh, a reason more to uh, watch this guide. And one last thing I received, um, I have read the feedback uh, for the Blood Angels that they look terrible and that they are a terrible faction and that uh, Black Templar would be so much better. <laughs> I had uh, low expectations when beginning this guide about the Black Templar. Then I, my expectations for them uh, did rise as I played some uh, games against the uh, AI and uh, got some really cool build orders, I thought, and then I played multiplayer and got completely stumped. So Black Templars are really, really weak in tier 1 and if you play one-on-one, -on -one, tier 1 is the most important part of the game and that's why Black Templars in one-on-one -on -one are really bad <laughs> against an opponent that knows how to play. Why that is, uh, we will see later on in this guide. But that's enough for the uh, stuff I talk in the beginning. Let's jump into the safe game. And here we are in the safe game. Before we go into the building overview, we will talk about resources and unit caps. Resources are completely standard. Requisition and power acquisition of these resources is also pretty standard. Strategic point, listening posts for requisition, power generators, thermoplasma generators for power. More interesting are the unit caps. The unit caps are mostly standard that you have squad cap and vehicle cap and um, but what is different is that you only start with six squad cap and zero vehicle cap. It goes up to the standard 2020 but uh, yeah you start with only six and have numerous ways to increase that. Um, you also have the standard ways of uh, the upgrades like plus five uh, for uh, squad cap two times for uh, research and then four times plus five for the vehicle cap. But you will notice with only the upgrades you will then uh, land at 16 but can go up to 20. Um, that's why there are or the, you can go up to 20 of course with uh, other reasons. Um, you get two cap each for uh, each stronghold barrack and over the relay beacon. Um, the machine code gives you two vehicle cap, which is also pretty standard, but then <coughs> the various heroes also provide you with um, squad cap. Plus one squad cap for the castellan, which is your force commander, plus two for the chaplain, and plus one again for one of the honor guard squad and that's the veteran sergeant he also increases the squad cap by one and then in tier three you can build this uh, damocles um, vehicle which increases both infantry and vehicle cap by two and that's most of that is not explained in the tooltips and whatnot so you have to know this by either playing a lot or watching this guide <laughs> Okay, with that we now jump to the buildings. Your HQ looks a little like a machine code, but it's not, that's your HQ. It doesn't really change the model with um, tearing up, which is, yeah, I, I, I like it when it uh, move, gets a little different. Mm. Yeah, but does standard HQ things, it um, provides you with the builders, which is your tech marine, the first capping unit. 
And here you get also all your three heroes, the uh, Castellan, the Chaplain and the Emperor's Champion. Um, before getting the Emperor's Champion there would be here three vows, three specializations you can uh, choose from. I will talk about them now I guess, why not. Um, you can choose them in tier 1 but they only get active once you reach tier 2 and get the Emperor's Champion out. The Emperor's Champion requires you to be tier 2 and have an armory. So basically you need to be tier 2 and have an armory and then have the Emperor's Champion out. There are three, uh, four different wows. Um, the first one is also the one that is mostly used. It's called Uphold the Honor of the Emperor and gives you 15% less damage received overall, ranged and melee. Um, 15, it could be also be 30, there's uh, um, Neon from the Discord uh, looked into Corsix and there are a lot of stuff but and he tried to make sense out of it. So it's 15 or 30% damage reduction. It you take also your units also take 10% less morale damage and uh, your your units ignore cover bonuses. So uh, your bolters and whatnot uh, ignore cover bonuses, which is not that important as melee attacks as um, Black Templars use mostly do not uh, take cover into account anyways. The second one is the one that is also uh, a little bugged in the end, but uh, let's just read it. It's Abhor the Witch. Um, it gives you 10% movement speed to all troops in a 200 radius of your HQ. 200 radius would be... Um, if the standard boulder had about 30, so it would be uh, 6 times that. So maybe... It's basically on small maps, it's more or less the whole map. Um, so on bigger maps you would at some point do not have this movement bonus. On most 101 map this is basically the, the whole map. You get 10% movement speed, which is nice. Your Emperor's Champion, the hero here, gives gets a true sight. And the Emperor's Champion nullifies abilities within 40 radius of Psychos. So it's all against Psychos. The bug with that is that it only nullifies abilities from vanilla factions. Uh, the new factions and their Psychos have not yet been added. So if you want to nullify um, abilities, you can only use this against the vanilla faction. So, um, yeah, uh, in what what it ex uh, exactly nullifies the abilities from, I can read here. It's the Dark Elder Archon, the Dark Elder Incubus, the Space Marine Librarian, the Imperial Guard Psyker, the Chaos Sorcerer, the Sister of Battle Canoness and Con Confessor, the Elder Farseer and the Elder Warlock abilities. The third one, the third wow is accept the challenge, increases charge range by 6 and BT melee weapon accuracy is increased uh, by 15 or 20, uh, 22%. percent. Um, that's uh, depending on the weapon. Um, so a lot of different um, values for different weapons. It also... Give me a second. It adds that and not multiplies them so for example if the weapon has an accuracy of 65 it now has 80 so weapon accuracy in melee only so melee um, weapons can only uh, also miss in this um, fact in this section in this uh, engine of dawn of war and this uh, makes it more less likely to miss so it's basically damage buff if you want to see it like that and the last one, the, the fourth wow is suffer not the unclean, um, which gives you a global damage bonus to all melee weapons. It's like actual numbers, so it's not like a percentage base, it's like 10 to 30 damage to a certain weapon. And this differs a lot between the squads, so it's hard to tell how much the increase is. And the in-game text also states that the attacks lower, but there are, uh, in the Corsics there is nothing written about it, so maybe it's just a uh, straight-up damage increase. And demons within a 40 radius of the Emperor's Champion have get slowed by 25%. So if I have read this all out, the most 
powerful one is the first one with less damage received and less morale damage received. Um, we will later discover that the righteous seal, the faction mechanic, makes it so that you lose control of some <coughs> of infantry units. If units around them die, I will go in more detail when I talk about the infantry. So um, st staying alive is on the essence, you could say. Mm, um, other than that, I would see uh, the uh, the third and fourth. Accept the challenge or suffer not the unclean as the best. If you fight against demons, you maybe use the last one, suffer not the unclean, to get some bonus damage and slow down them around the Empress Champion. But yeah, most people use the first one as it uh, makes your guys more sturdy. That's the specializations you can get from your HQ. So that's the HQ out of the way. No, you can also get the Damocles later on, which um, interesting tech requirement for that is that you don't only need full scale crusade, uh, which is uh, tier three, but you need to have the add on on the unit uh, building itself. So you can only can build it at one landing site that has the two add ons, but it's also limited to one. So it's not a big deal to be honest. Um, then for unit productions, you have your stronghold barrack, which looks like a <coughs> sacred artifact, but is uh, your barracks. Gives you all the different infantry you have. Then you have the machine cult in tier two, which gives you all the vehicles, as well as your tier four research. And then you have the orbital relay, which does orbital relay things and building units that you already can build, but you can deep strike them. Here you get one additional new unit, which is the venerable dreadnought, which is a uh, you could say a tier 3 relic unit. For research, you only have the armory, no sacred artifact. Here you get all upgrades for your infantry and for your heroes as well. So you have the hero upgrades, which I already got here on the right side as well. Um, cool. Um, then you have your listening posts, which are pretty standard, and your generators, which are all pretty standard. For defense, you have a Tarantula turret, which um, starts with a twin-linked heavy bolter and can get upgraded to twin-linked heavy, uh, not heavy, twin-linked glass cannon instead of a missile launcher from your sandy uh, bolter turret. You have a minefield, and you see here, <coughs> I will say this again when I talk about the Tech Marine. The Tech Marine has an unexplained aura, which uh, probably increases the accuracy or damage of the turrets, and it only affects turrets and nothing else. So. Keeping your tech marine close to your turret can help in defense, for example, in survival. Um, this is all the buildings out of the way. Let's talk about the units. And before I go into detail the units, I will now talk about the faction mechanic, Righteous Seal. Righteous Seal uh, is activated once a unit dies. Um, we may produce one another one here and just show it. Um, if I kill this unit, these units will turn... They should turn. Why, why aren't they turn... Interesting. They should turn uh, purple and... Uh, there they go. They turn purple because someone died and I can't move them. I lose control. I can't click anything. What I can use is their uh, abilities, however. So this is uh, nice, nice to... Um, be able to use them. I actually will try if I can use the jump ability from the assault marines. That's interesting. Um, but other than that, you uh, don't have control over the unit, which is bad if you're standing in a bad spot. I had a game where in Blood River where I pushed back an elder player uh, through the river. I was standing in the river and fighting him back. Actually, managed to fight him back, but uh, in the process, one dude dies, and all my units stand in the <laughs> in, the, in the river with the negative cover and get a shot the from the farm. So now is let's see if I kill this unit. Us, they should go in the righteous seal mode and should not be able to move. Into Come on. Assault yeah. Can, and the jump ability is disabled. It's only grenades that uh, stay, stay enabled. Interesting. Um, the uh, Killing um, the, the air, there's an area that is only affected if there's someone dies. You know, these guys uh, don't um, care that someone on this side of the map died, so it's uh, radius, but the radius seems to be around this size, so a little more even. The 
problem with that that it also affects um, the, the loss of control also affects all <coughs> given orders like uh, movement commands like um, weapon upgrades and capping so if you're capping in the early game and the unit somewhere near your base dies the squads will stop cap that point which is sad righteous seal does not only have negative uh, effects the loss of control is negative of course your hero units um, also have righteous seal but i think they don't uh, you, you don't lose control of your hero units only about your infantry units and i think but um, correct me if i'm wrong if you attach a hero to a squad um, and they get righteous seal they can still move but uh, i'm not 100 certain about that you cannot attach your heroes to uh, squads that are currently in righteous seal as well okay so that's all the negative stuff what's the the benefit of that um, you lose the control but your ranged and melee damage um, is increased by 22.5 percent so you deal about 20 percent more damage in ranged and melee for 20 seconds which is good and the damage you take is also decreased by 15 percent your movement speed is increased by 10% as well for 20 seconds and your morale regeneration increased by 500% for 10 seconds. So if someone around uh, dies and your, the units are broken, they basically aren't broken anymore. They just turn like uh, they, they are sellers. They want to revenge their fallen brothers, which is kind of makes sense. So the benefit for your units dying uh, is also there. <laughs> but uh, losing control is like a big big negative and yeah having units that f they, they fight better but they, you cannot control them is yeah it's always a bad thing it's it's more bad than good okay now that we have righteous seal off the way let's talk about the uh, hero units first the first hero unit you have is the castellan the castellan does not have <coughs> any abilities at the start um, he can get later on the ability holy orb of the Antioch, which is a tier 3 research, which gives him a big old grenade. Boom! Tier 3. And you need a relic for the research as well. And if you have t t uh, three specific um, upgrades, your power fist, your second commander upgrade, and these terminator honors for your heroes, you can change him to a Tactical Dreadnought Armor War Gear, which is free of charge. And then he will get basically to a, to be a new unit, the Castellan in a Terminator Armor. He, it calls Dreadnought Armor, that's basically, I think, an old saying of um, Terminator Armor. And you now can teleport around, you can uh, order an orbital bombardment, and if I see it correctly, you also have an aura now which is not explained what it does, but I think this is should be the standard damage increasing aura from a force commander. I hope I have this in the tech tree as well. Okay, the second hero you get in tier two is the chaplain, who, which does just chaplain things, having uh, the health regeneration aura, as well as the health regeneration bonus for the squad he's attached to, as well as an unmatched seal. Ignites the furious and anger of his brethren towards the enemies. Same effects as Righteous Seal. Increased damage and attacks for a short period of time. It basically gives your units around Righteous Seal, um, but should stack, which is kind of interesting. <coughs> pretty, pretty good. And the last hero you have access to is the Emperor's Champion. Um, that's your tier two Vow. Um, unit you need to have him on the field to to be uh, to have your vows active he has a blessed frag grenade which uh, you don't need to research and has uh, uh, the wow you choose in the top left corner here so you can read again what what actually this uh, wow does he also gets an aura if you researched uh, the terminator honors because he does not get terminator honors but he gets an aura which also is not explained what it does you see here now now there's an aura yeah so there are two auras one from him and one from him and also the uh, healthy generating aura of the uh, chaplain 
The other hero-like unit which you can attach is the skull probe. The skull probe um, you see here <coughs> flies above ground, which uh, is just an indication that it can jump around, which is unique. The other skull probes of the different chapters cannot use it. They can detect infiltrators and uh, can be attached to squads and can also be researched to be invisible. I totally forgot about the builder, which I normally talk first. It's a tech marine. Um, for tech marine has quite low health, so it's a uh, tech marine light, you could say. He has uh, kind of good range damage. He has the aura for the turrets, as I stated earlier. He can build and repair and can also use frag grenades once research, which is nice. Um, you can only have up to three tech marines, and yeah, the health isn't as as big as you would uh, like. But he has heavy infantry armor, which is more than um, servitors and whatnot have. Um, there's one more thing I want to show you. Um, can we please quickly get a fire support squad out here? Because infantry squads, the heroes get attached to, they glow uh, red, which I, it's not explained what it does, but I, I assume they deal more damage or that they, yeah, it's some some kind of benefit they get f from the heroes being attached to them. And as you have only three heroes, you need to choose wisely where to attach your heroes. We are ready to give our but as to most of your <coughs> big squads, good squads are limited to one each, the command squad and whatnot, I will tell later you probably attach them to one of these uh, big spots. And if you attach them here, can't it be attached? Are you, are you kidding me? Normally you can attach to the Crusader squad. This makes no, no sense at all. Why this is disabled here? Maybe it's something with unlimited mod in a normal gameplay you can attach to the crusader fire support squad as well but we move over this crusader squad here we will kill them here to see that the right seal should also be activated by most units here at least by them but i can still control them you see this uh, little glow aura, aura so they are affected by righteous seal the aura that the range seems to be a little lower than i said around here but you can move them. So they get all the benefits from Righteous here, but you can still control them. So you can attach them here, and then the squad should, yeah, go like uh, this, um, this um, pink. What this exactly does, I don't know, but you see here that they are now uh, glowing pink and probably are more angry than before or whatnot. <laughs> okay, that's about that. Let's go here to the infantry overview. For your basic infantry you have the Crusader squad which is your melee based capping squad, quite expensive to begin with, with 150 requisition so, and very slow to build, so with slow start of the game. That's one of the reasons why the start for Emperor Str uh, Emperor Str uh, Black Templars is so slow. The capping units take ages to build and yeah. They are heavy armor, um, are melee focused, they can not get a squad leader which is true for basically every squad but one <coughs> um, have an arrangement of different weapons they can get fl one flamer they can get plasma pistols for which you have to research the plasma pistol war gear power weapon which for which you need to research power swords and power fists for which you need to research power fists as well so you have different research requirements for the heavy weapons which is a unique mechanic that mm, I don't think many other uh, factions have this. They can also use frag grenades. Interesting um, about these weapons, what is not explained that you, if you research power swords and power fists, you get more available war gear. You start with only two, but if you research the power swords and power fists, you get uh, one more each, even for the plasma pistols. So if you want to use more plasma pistols on a Crusader squad, you need to research power swords. <laughs> Uh, as funny as this may seem. You start off with th three max models. If you build a barracks, you get uh, two, three more models, so you can have up to six. Let me count one, two, three, four, five. Five only. Okay, two more to have up to five. And then you see all these little s scout dudes around here. These are not scout, these are neophytes, they're called. Um, neo neophytes are basically wannabe Black Templars. 
they are cheaper than your normal black templar and you can add them up to five for this squad you have to click them manually you cannot put them on overwatch this is what the uh, the second to last line here meets with only one neophyte can be trained per initiate which is doesn't really explain it well but you can only build one at a time is is what it means to be and you have can have up to five for your crusader melee squad the second squad in tier one you can build from a barrack is the crusader fire support squad which has up to one two three four five six six models and five neophytes these are um, ranged neophytes can also use frag grenades, don't have a squad leader because you have these neophytes and has also a, a big range of heavy weapons to choose from. In uh, tier 1.5 you get flamers and heavy bolters, so similar to uh, chaos space marines. The heavy bolters aren't as strong as your heavy bolters from a standard space marines though and you can only have two. There's no way to increase the heavy weapons for this squad, they only, always only have two. In tier 2 you get access to plasma cannons, melter guns and multi melters and in tier 3 I think you get less cannons which is really nice to have less cannons on the field on a range squad. These squads are limited to 3 so you can't spam ranged stuff for the black templars which is probably uh, to keep them from being uh, standard space marines where you can just spam space marines. Basically they the devs want to go want you to go into melee. Okay. The next squad you have access in tier one. Ready Building armory is assault yourself. marines. Um, or assault initiates they're called here. Um, they are basically your standard assault marines but have no ranged option. They have this storm shields here, so they should have more HP than your standard space marine um, assault marines. And yeah, if you go for Bionics, they're even more tanky, of course. Have power swords as weapons. Um, they can get power weapons and power fists. The power weapons require you to have uh, power swords researched and tier 2. And power fists require you to have power fists researched, which is also locked behind tier 2. So in tier 1, they will always have these uh, chain swords, but then later on, they can get. Uh, more weapons um, to, to upgrade. They can get melter bombs in tier 2 and of course they can jump around. Another squad you also have access in tier 1 so you see there's a lot of <coughs> sorry different squads available in tier 1 which would suggest that they are good in tier 1 um, but as I said they're really slow at the start making tier 1 uh, really hard to play especially that all your dudes are affected by righteous seal making them really uh, likely to kill before all the good wows and stuff come on the field but late more uh, about it later the command squad uh, starts with more or less standard crusaders um, but can get different leaders they can get uh, the apothecary in tier one which gives you apothecary things more health regeneration for the squad and squads around it in the tier 2 you can add a standard barrel and a veteran sergeant. The veteran sergeant gives you access to melter bombs if you have research that uh, frag grenades can use by the squad. If you have research that heavy weapons you can choose from in tier 1 are heavy bolters and in tier 2 missile launchers. The only squad with missile launchers for Black Templar limited to 1 the command squad. Um, the uh, standard barrel, a little more about the standard barrel. The standard barrel uh, makes your guys unbreakable it states here. No, I, I mixed it up. Our friendly units with inside of the, co uh, the company battle standard are inspired to fight with even greater fortitude and resolve. Projects an aura that provides morale and damage bonus. Um, interesting is that if this dude dies, there are two effects. One, the morale of squads. Uh, I, often, I don't know if all squads, but the squads in the area will drop. And you will see here now, so it's like morale broken for nearby squads. Yeah, they take a big hit to morale. And you will notice here the Thunderhawk pickup. The Thunderhawk is just not just a whistle, the, uh, visual. All the guns attached to it will fire while this uh, guy is pick up, picked up. Um, this pickup is limited to the banner bearer, and I forgot to tell you 
also about the uh, Amber Sturgeon. If one of those two dies, the Thunderhawk will pick them up and deal a lot of damage around. While this is really bad for the Emperor's Champion as you uh, lose your vows and whatnot, it is, isn't as super bad for your banner bearer. You yes, your, your morale is broken, but you remember Righteous Seal increases your morale region by 500%, so yeah, uh, the morale will get up uh, quickly. And if you, because he's a squad leader, it may happen that the standard bearer dies, but the squad is still alive, so you can reinforce him on the field to basically to die again and get another Thunderhawk pickup. So uh, interesting stuff can happen here. So the Thunderhawk pickup is really strong in that sense. Going into tier 2, you then have access to Sword Brethren, which is uh, similar kind of to the Honor Guard. You have access uh, for your standard Space Marines. Uh, melee focused, but not exclusive. I just see that they have plasma pistols here. Why is that? Interesting. So they get some plasma pistols for free. Interesting. So, um,. Melee superiority squad in tier 2 have access to both frag grenades and crack grenades. The crack grenades uh, require you to research melter bombs. Um, yeah, so you get crack grenades for them, not melter bombs. Standard weapon upgrades you have also for your um, for your crusader squad, but I think these uh, plasma gun, it's a plasma gun, not a plasma pistol, so the flamer and plasma gun you can get uh, right away, but uh, the power fist and power weapon you need to research. Uh, four. Interesting to note is that you can only field five power fists, but one additional power sword. Don't know if this is a bug or if this is meant to be. In tier three, you get access. Uh, in this is limited to one as well. In tier three, you get access to your assault terminators and range terminators. Both are limited to one squad each. They can teleport if you research the teleport war gear. Don't have a squad leader, as is true for all the infantry squads but have uh, heavy weapons. The range terminators can get heavy flamers and assault cannons, which is pretty standard for a range terminator, but they can also get cyclone missile launchers, which are added to the shoulders and will fire alongside the standard gun. So it's an additional weapon and not a replacement, which I find interesting because if you get an assault cannon, I think it replaces the storm portal. <coughs> but we will see. Your assault terminators also uh, have happy weapons in uh, that they have lightning claws, which is more suited to fight um, low armor infantry, but get a uh, big attack speed. So the damage should be lower than one hit of these um, thunder hammers, but they attack more quickly. Here we see here, this is an assault cannon. This is replace the standard storm boulder, and we see here the cyclone missile larger is attached to the top of it. So I, of all these, I would most of the time go for cyclone missile launchers. They are really expensive, but yeah, are worthwhile in my mind. So one last thing I want to check. Uh, we saw that the uh, righteous seal for your commanders um, did make it so that you can still move your squads. Now we will check one thing I, I said in the beginning, that if you have a commander attached to one of your squads that you can still move the squad. We have these guys here, the Crusaders, to die. So these guys now should uh, all turn zealous. In a second now I can't move them, but I can move them because the leader is attached to the squad. So this is actually true what I said. Um, we see that the uh, Terminators... Okay, they get also sell us because they got into the radius of the dead. Okay, so it's not like a buff they receive when a unit dies, but it's a more or less aura around the, the dead that uh, makes the righteous seal. That's interesting. Interesting to note. Um, we can try to replicate it by killing the sword brethren here. And we'll see that these guys will turn zealous in a second. And then we will move them in to verify what we have seen. 
they move in and now I lose control. So it's mechanic wise there is an aura that is projected by dead models around them, around this, this radius it seems and units coming inside of that radius will get the righteous seal buff. So it's an aura. Interesting. And we note having leaders attached to your squads will still give them the righteous seal bonuses but not <coughs> the problem with losing control. Okay, that's also something I learned here now <laughs> while doing this here, which is interesting. Good to note. Okay, now that we have all the different infantry out of the way, we will now talk about the vehicles. The vehicles are all, most of them, are pretty standard. We know them from before. We have a Rhino, we have a Razorback with uh, different heavy weapons like twin-linked uh, heavy flamers, assault cannons or less cannons, less cannons later on. We have a Predator, which uh, with one interesting part that he cannot change the auto cannon on top. The auto cannon will always stay in auto cannon. You only can get last cannons at the side and get an additional guy with a storm bolter on top. Similar to that, the uh, Vindicator gets a storm bolter on top and he can use machine spirit. I think the, he gets it by upgrade. I will check that after I recorded that and will um, make sure that I have this in the tech tree. I didn't notice having him the machine spirit ability, but that's really nice. Reducing damage taken by him. Not that important for an artillery squad uh, with that kind of range, so can be useful if uh, there's a jump troop going uh, to your Vindicator. And you notice that all these Rhino based vehicles could use uh, smoke launchers, which is cool to know. The Damocles, which is a tier 3 special. Uh, Rhino based vehicle also can use smoke launchers has some attack but it's not really meant for attack he's more meant for reconnaissance long range scanner to scan it's like basically the HQ scan for Imperial Guard and he can uh, use an orbital bombardment it's you will um, we will see in a second where is this guy do you attach him you know that <coughs> the uh, custom also can use the uh, orbital bombardment, but they have a shared cooldown, so you cannot use both orbital bombardments. They have a shared cooldown, making it, Im it impossible to have two orbital bombardment at the same time, which is a good thing. Um, the other um, vehicles you have access to is a dreadnought. The dreadnought itself isn't really that special. It has um, heavy bolters and a fist here or claw whatever you want to call it but you see here he has a ton of different weapon upgrades which is cool he can get flamer multi melter assault cannon twin linked auto cannon last cannon and plasma cannon that the latter are locked behind tiers and researches the first four you have access more or less directly in tier two which is cool to have an uh, twin linked auto cannon uh, dreadnought which is kind of similar to the auto cannon dreadnought you have for the Dark Angels. And then in tier 3 with a relic and a research you can access to the Venerable Dreadnought. To the darkness I bring fire. Okay, so he's all about fire, having a trending heavy flamer at the side, but this can be changed to a plasma cannon or a multi melter, having a meaner looking thing here. So he has these claw add ons while he has only the fist, but. And both have a wrist. Uh, um, not wrist. So it's a wrist, uh, basically your hand attached flamer as well. Bam, plasma cannon, and here we have the auto cannon. Everybody likes auto cannons, right? And as a relic unit, you have the Land Raider Crusader here. The Land Raider Crusader is a standard Land Raider. Um, has I thought he has flamers. Uh, these aren't flamers. I thought the Crusader has like flamers all around. So he has more anti-infantry. He has like six linked heavy boulders at each side big storm boulders at the front if this is storm boulders and a guy with a, a heavy bolt on top so he's all about the bolters range should be okay yeah range should be good as well oh and i totally forget to put him here which is one unit which is really nice to have almost forgot about it it's the land speeder the land speeder is 
um, starts with only one <coughs> heavy bolter here uh, or twin linked heavy bolter at the front but he can also get an assault cannon or a typhoon missile launcher which is really nice he is available in tier 2 as well it's really fast, can jump around and only requires one vehicle cap. And you will start with two vehicle cap building your machine uh, nave, your machine cult. So you can have up to two of those with missile launchers on the field directly in tier 2, making them a really nice option start going into tier 2. Into tier two. Because uh, Razorback, uh, you can only have one because it requires two. Um, Squad gap. As for the limits, of course, your Crusader and your Random Protection are limited to one, your Damocles as well, and your Predator and Vindicator are limited to two uh, units each. As I said, I will look into the Machine Spirit because there's one up upgrade, Sacred Artifacts, that, um, yeah, I wasn't finished with the Land Raider. The, he has the Machine Spirit and the hunt Fire, the Hunter Killer Missile. The Hunter Killer Missile is um, available through Sacred Artifacts. Sacred Artifacts is a tier 3 research which requires you to be tier 3 and a, having a relic and gives you the, for example for the hand the Hunter Killer Missile makes you uh, available to use the Dreadnought and uh, activates the Castellan, not the Terminator Castellan, the standard Castellan's this big firebomb ability. So I will look into this real quick and then we will jump into the tech tree where I show you all the different upgrades, tech requirements and bonus units for Black Templars. And here we are in the tech tree document where you see all the different tech requirements. As you see these, um, these are the different wows you can choose from. Uh, uphold the Emperor, the Witch thing and one is the unclean one and one is the other one. Um, this is the one that gives the HQ the uh, movement speed aura. That's why I gave this HQ an passive ability to uh, make make it clear like that. Um, but first of all, about let's talk about the tech requirements. It's pretty straightforward. You need to build a barracks or a armory to get into tier two, which is basically center. But then in your tier two, you need to have a machine cult because it's the only tier two building. But you also need to have a barracks, so you can cannot make a, let's say, slim tier 3 where you only got a armory and a machine cult, you will always need your barracks to proceed to tier 3. Once you're in tier 3, there's also a special requirement to start your heavy armor deployment. You can't go directly into it. You need to have three vehicle cap increases <laughs> for some reason. So you cannot rush tier 4 or anything, not that you would get a lot of stuff in tier 4 anyways, but yeah, you want to have need to have three um, vehicle cap increases. That's how you tech. Now about researches, uh, I already said that the vows are in your HQ. You can get them in tier one directly, but the benefits are only available in tier two once your emperor's champion is on the field. So no reason to spend the 100 requisition in tier one directly. Uh, you can uh, delay this decision uh, until tier 2, which is kind of similar to the uh, decision for Blood Angels, where you have also access to this Wings or Might of Sanguinius in tier 1, but the benefits will only be available in tier 2 and onwards. So make sure not to, uh, not to uh, you get this too early, the requisition you will need for different stuff. In your barracks, you can get your infantry uh, cap upgrades as well as the different uh, grenade variants. Um, it's always shown crack grenades, so it's a different. It's not that you choose that you research melt bombs, you research crack grenades, but you get melt bombs for some squads. Uh, you can deep strike your terminators, but you need an armory for it, which is also pretty standard uh, in terms of space marine chapters. In your machine cold, you can build your machine uh, units and you can increase your vehicle cap and research the smoke launchers but also the tier 4 is a research as well. In orbit the relay beacon you basically have only one research which is the teleporter packs for your terminators. All your other different research for your units and heroes is done in the armory. In the armory you can get plasma pistols which not only gives the hero plasma pistols but uh, also some the, the Crusader squads can now then uh, build plasma pistols. This weapon upgrades aren't as strong on your heroes bec um, because you don't have sergeants um, 
apart from the sergeant from your honor guard squad. So you cannot have like <clears throat> three space marine squads with the sergeant that now all have plasma pistols. So not the greatest upgrade overall. But then you also have access to your um, Tagoras and Bionics upgrade. Interestingly enough, you don't need to have the Bionics first to get to your first Targeters, but you need to have the first Bionics to get your second tier of Targeters in tier two. Um, you can research the power swords, which in turn gives you, once you reach tier two, also power swords for your melee squads as heavy weapons. You can uh, then order them to get them. And then you can also get the power fists. This power fist ability um, is one of the requirements for <coughs> your Terminator Castellan. Your standard hero upgrade is here until you get to tier three. And then you have a special upgrade in tier two which makes the bonuses of Ratchet Seal um, bigger and also in, uh, extends the time these bonuses are active. I don't know if this also extends the time um, the loss of control is active, but I would assume so. So you have now maybe 30 seconds instead of 20 seconds, the control loss and whatnot. And there are two interesting upgrades here. These are Terminator honors for your commanders. Also one required for the Terminator Castellan. This increases the armor rating of your commanders. And it states that you get small amounts of requisition once a Sword Brethren dies. Sword Brethren are the Sword Brethren squad here. But also your, your Terminator variants are called Sword Brethren Terminator. Sword Brethren Assault Terminator. So this gives you some resources spec which is not something you would normally want because you want them to stay alive. And then you have Terminator honors for your sword brethren, which is basically giving this sword brethren Terminator armor, I think. And then you have this uh, upgrade sacred artifacts, which is tier three and requires a relic. This um, gives some bonuses. I said I looked into the Vindicator and yes, the Vindicator gets the machine spirit ability from this upgrade as well as the Land Raider give it getting the uh, Hunter-Killer Missile upgrade and your Castellan getting this uh, Holy Orb ability, as well as you need to have this for your Venerable Dreadnought. So really important upgrade in the late game. For your um, economy upgrades, it's pretty standard. You have your listing post where you can also get the infiltration upgrade for your Skull probes. Heading over to the units, you see that I have made clear which units are affected by Rage Seal. <coughs> and I have a passive ability for him. Nice. Um, what is also important, yeah, I made this uh, damage reduction and a bonus speed or charge uh, bonus um, clear here with giving all the uh, different units a passive ability. And this is the uh, the witch thingy, which only gives the um, Empress Champion a passive, like the, no, this is the, the demon, right? Or the witch? No, this is the demon. It's uh, given the, the ability to slow down demons. And this is the passive, which um, disables abilities of units around. And this is keen sight, basically true sight. Um, here in the units, we can now clearly see what I meant, what resources you need. You need to research plasma pistols to have this available on your Crusaders and later on you need also to have power swords and tier two and power fists, which is a tier two research for your different uh, melee based squads to have them active, which is true also for the sword brethren here. And you see also the different grenades. You get melters here, you get a crack grenades here and frag grenades for these squads here. Um, I made clear that the thunder Thunderhawk pickup is also mentioned here. So this is this icon uh, available for the banner bearer and Empress Children here. Empress Champion, Jesus, not the children. Um, for your vehicle to see everything here as well. And I already had that implemented here, the, <clears throat> the machine spirit ability for your Vindicator. Your bonus squads in survival aren't the greatest. You get a Crusader squad. Yay. You get a fire support squad. Yay. <coughs> I think the only benefit for the fire support squad or the biggest benefit is that they can carry more heavy weapons, which is nice to have. Then you get a Dreadnought, a Predator and a Land Raider. So nothing special here. 
Next, we'll jump into the different build orders where I will go into more detail why um, Black Templars are so weak in tier one. You will see that in the build orders more clearly. So see you over there. And here we are on the build order documents. I hope my voice survives this. I have still a bit of Nurgle's blessing and I hope it's not too annoying to hear me coughing every now and then. But okay, the build orders. You will notice that in all the different build orders you don't start with more than three different squads, which is a problem um, as you want to have two squads capping. So we basically only have one squad be able to fight. So you will need to stay defensive in the beginning, which is fr by itself not good. But if you want to stay defensive or need to stay defensive and then if you lose a uh, model will have loose control of your squads that makes everything so bad basically. Another problem is that you start with only six and if you build this um, this uh, barracks only with eight uh, squad cap. But for example the command squad here requires you to have three. So uh, it costs three, this takes two, so you have two, four, six and will need nine. So you need to build a castle and before you can build these. You kind of want to have the Castellan on the field anyway, but still. Okay, enough of that. The standard build order uh, is works against AI pretty good, against the players not so much because they will take the map and annoy you in your base. But that's true for all the <laughs> all the build orders. Okay, you start off with uh, the two Crusaders, two cap squads, get a second tech marine to build stuff more quickly, get a barracks for a fire support squad and a Plasma generator, then you will need to uh, cap your points, build stuff, and later you want to add the Castellan to get more one more squad cap to then be able to afford a squad cap to build the uh, command squad. The command squad is really good. It's basically a Crusader squad, but also has heavy bolters if you want to, and um, has the apothecary for health regeneration support. So I think this is better than having a second uh, fire support squad. <clears throat> then you will need uh, about one more additional generator before you can go up to tier 2. Tier 2 is the standard cost 300 requisition 125 power. A uh, more heavy tier 1 option is uh, the range crusaders I call it. For that you want to um, have a tech marine first out so you build up this barracks as quickly as you can because you only get one capper squad here and then two fire support squad so you have more ranged but it takes quite a while to have them on the field because you want to build it and you need to build them so it delays the start even more with the benefit having two ranged squad you still want to build a, a generator behind this and then once you get the castellan or raid uh, i would suggest the other way around i would suggest that you first get the armory to get the heavy bolters um, to have some sort of defense and then i would at the Castellan, get the command squad out, get grenades before or after the command squad <clears throat> and give the command squad also heavy bolters. Um, why I said that you can also get a third tech marine is that you can have it as support at your front line or your defense line because it also get access to the grenades you research here as well as maybe building a offensive or defensive turret. Your other two tech marines are probably busy building up buildings, listening posts, and generators. <clears throat> and as you already have the armory out, you might as well get uh, two infantry upgrades. I wouldn't suggest plasma pistols because it only uh, affects your castellan, so I wouldn't bother using this. Then you need one or maybe two more generators before be able to proceed to tier two. An interesting opener here, the plasma opener, um, is that you build a uh, armory and a generator at the same time. You start a <coughs> armory and then the second uh, tech marine will start directly with the plasma generator because you need um, a little bit of power in the beginning because you want to uh, A, build tech marines which cost power here, which is kind of a downside for the tech marines as well. You want to have power for your castellan and for the two researchers here as soon as you can afford them. The plasma pistols, you get plasma pistols uh, for your 
um, this is the wrong icon. I will change that for your Crusader squad. As well as the power swords for giving you one additional uh, plasma pistol for your Crusader squads. Your Crusader squads are stuck at three models because you don't have a, a barracks. Your neophytes you can also not be added because they also require you to have the barracks, so they are stuck at three models but can only have two plasma pistols. But if you research the power swords after it, they get one additional heavy weapon. So you have then three models with three plasma pistols, which is nice. Um, later on, you want to add another Crusader squad to have an additional squad out with uh, plasma pistols. And that's it uh, as much you can get because you start off with six um, squad cap get one for your Castellan, but one is not enough to get another Crusader out. So you're stuck with three Crusaders, so you may want to get the upgrades for them. You also can skip them and get an earlier tier two. On the way to tier two, you want to add the barracks to um, enhance your Crusader squads and be able to start building um, sword um, brethren in tier two, which is your go-to unit. Then you can also get assault <clears throat> Marines, but as you say here, you, your research wise, uh, let's say, hindered, so you can only get your two Crusaders and one Assault Marine out on the field. You want to have two Crusaders, so you can cap your stuff around and rather get one Assault Marine less. As you have the Armory out of the field anyway, and this all lines up to having enough uh, power to just get these Bionics, I would suggest. <coughs> Sorry, getting them. So your already really tanky assault initiates also get more tanky. So they can uh, be a nuisance decapping stuff without losing models and whatnot. And you don't want to have to, to lose the models with them because when you lose models and stick around too long, they lose control. So be aware using them. Basically the same problem you have with um, Blood Angels Assault Marines, where you lose control when in melee, here you lose control once a unit dies, so use them with caution. Then you want to get um, more power generators to get to tier 2. And as always, you can also opt to rush tier 2. I would suggest you to rush tier 2 with a armory and then get a machine code, because then you can get your land speeders out, two land speeders with either assault cannons or missile launchers, depending on what you need. As always with these tier two rushes, they are really dangerous as you are still, as you are uh, really endangered in tier one. Um, as I said earlier, you really um, have a problem against harassment uh, strategies against you, like uh, Raptors, Assault Marines, or the worst of all, Seraphim. Because not only do you have only three squads to cap in the beginning, which is, isn't a whole lot. It's like Guardsmen, but Guardsmen have uh, good Tech Marines and whatnot. Uh, a, a good, um, what are they called? They're not Tech Marines, they are Machine. How can I forget that? That's my favorite factions. Whatever, these guys. Um, so you might want to build a turret with your tech marine early on to defend your defend your sites and get to a tier two. Um, that's not nothing I have really experimented here, but you might want to incorporate a turret in your um, build orders here. And at least in the first two, the um, build order here, the plasma opener gives you somewhat of a damage output in tier one. So you can repel some attacks, but uh, first ones here um, don't give you enough damage and stuff to be able to defend early harassments quite well. So you might want to incorporate here and this a turret for the tech marines with your tech marines. So keep that in mind. If you want to really play a, a Black Templar more, you might need to do that. That said, if you have a passive opponent, which AI generally is, uh, at least enough that you can build up a bit or not so experienced players. You can get into tier two relatively unscathed. You can get the Emperor's Churton out, your vows, your upgrades and whatnot. So you can hit your power spike in tier two 
which is having the Emperor's children out, having the Sword Brethren out, the Command Squad and everything out, all the different <coughs> unique squads and heroes out, even a chaplain. And then you have a big infantry blob that is really tanky. I, I don't want to call it unstoppable because you can stop it, but it's really tanky. And then the, all the debuffs from the right seal that you lose control doesn't matter as much as you also have like three squads where heroes are attached, so they don't lose control, but get the benefits. And you have the wows, um, basically the uphold emperor, the damage resistance over on top of it. So your power spike, if you can name it, is in tier two because it's that's basically because your tier one is so bad. In bigger team games like 2v2s or free for alls, this can be a totally different story because that's there's um, the early aggression may hit not you but an ally. Or in free for all you may don't be attacked at all so you can take up unscathed to tier 2 where as i said before um, is where you start to get good even to a point that some people say that they are too good with all the different buffs stacked up they <coughs> basically become unkillable imagine having uh, the emperor the the, the uphold the emperor damage resistance buff you take less damage with um, the righteous seal activated you have um, a apocotic carry and a um, chaplain and whatnot so all the different auras stacking up to be uh, able to just um, a move <laughs> into the enemy base but from my experience in one on ones they are just bad okay that's enough of that Let's jump into a replay. That's one of the games I played against Chakma. Given that Chakma is the leader of the um, leaderboards right now, I didn't have a, a fun time against him, but I show you one replay. I think I show you the one where I use this plasma opener against Space Marines. So you see kind of how this uh, will um, deal with Space Marines in tier one and uh, still how how much time you would need to be able to have something on the field so yeah in tier two as you hit tier two you still need some time to get a um a blob out and whatnot so you will see it and replay enough talk of it now and here we are on this uh, replay where i play black templar versus none other than shakma playing space marines You see the build order in fruition, you get a second tech marine for the plasma generator, the first one building the armory and then two crusader squads and once the armory is finished you want to queue up your castellan and yeah start capping your points. You may say yeah the black temple are better because you're just not as good as uh, Shakma is, that might be true <coughs> in a sense but uh, yeah, I lost so much games with my uh, preparations for this guide that I'm not um, at here, uh, not top 10 anymore, but still, um, yeah, I should probably have more of a chance even against Shakma when uh, the faction should be a little better. You will see that this opener kind of holds its own in tier 1. Um, yeah, for the opener I get um, first the Castellan lined up, then the Plasma Pistol upgrade, you see that my, all my power goes into these upgrades and of course the second tech marine, one tech marine costs you 10 power as well. Then I go on the field getting my points. And you will also see the problem in having only two squads, that's more of a guards, <laughs> guardsman problem normally that you have only a few squads online. Um, but okay, now I am finished up these plasma pistols. I could go for plasma pistols, but I want to save my power to get the power sword upgrade first, so I can have more plasma pistols on these squads. Now I can only have two. The scouts shoot me, so that's nothing I really care about. They, yes, they deal some damage, but that's not as much. Here my Castellan is out now as well, so I move him directly here to flank these guys. They deal more damage than I uh, thought, but uh, yeah, it's the force commander basically that does all the damage. I kept this, lose two models, expensive models, and they will decap it. But now I have um, my plasma pistol started, I have this upgrade um, almost done. I need to 
uh, build up my points actually. I have here one with the plasma pistol which uh, trades kind of well. Killed a lot of models of these uh, scout squads here and now standing here shooting into the cover which should be okay once my um, additional crusaders should arrive. Yeah, here you see it. I can actually drive back space marines with this opener, dealing a lot of damage. Now my idea was to that I uh, let this be kept by a, a newly trained squad and stay aggressive on the map. Now I finished the war gear here and you see that you have um, this, all three models have plasma pistols here and the damage is okay-ish. <coughs> I decide to move Castellan into melee because he will get a better melee weapon as well with the power sword upgrade. So he should do quite a lot of damage against this listening pose. Yes, he does. And I also decided to drop an uh, offensive turret, which um, makes this area, so this movement also uh, not possible, but there is already a scout marine out, of course, getting this point, so not the best placement. I should have probably put it here, which would enable me to get this point, actually. Now I decapped this, um, while there are also units around here. I lose my tech marine, which is bad. He does quite a lot of damage, you see, but this might be as well the damage scored already. But still, <coughs> losing tech marine is so costly, because they also cost power, which will in turn um, delay your tech. Do I get this? Yes, I get a scout squad. Nice! Other than that, I'm just in here. You see here, I can kind of can micro out of the control loss. I just clicking like a madman, clicking them bad, uh, back. They lost the model and then they got a Celis and almost, almost um, run into their death. In their death. So I get this uh, turret up. I get this point up. So I have kind of a foothold on the other side of the map. But here's a listening post which uh, deals too much damage. I cannot uh, take it now. I could run in with my Castellan and then attack in range with my Crusaders, but Chakma is experienced enough to refocus his listening post to attack my infantry uh, squads, so I can't do that. Now I have my third squad here coming out of my base, so I'm now forced the issue on my side again. But all this um, takes up power and resources and whatnot, um, more than the spaceman players spending. These squads, every uh, initiate here costs me 150, so 50 plus 20, 17 per model and 5 power. And I lost some of them. I also got a custom out and got some upgrades, which isn't probably a good way to um, go. I should get the range upgrade, but um, I'm not sure if I got the, the burning. But the range upgrade is useful because it should also increase the damage of these plasma pistols. The problem with this is um, you can't really swarm the map because one of these squads alone uh, is weak. You need to have at least two of them and maybe the hero, I'm not sure. But here's now the point where I decide, okay, I no sight from the enemy. He's probably tacking up uh, now that I think about it. But um, yeah, so this Bionics was a mistake. I shouldn't have got him, so I would be early on tier 2. I would be on the way of tier 2 already. So Bionics skipping could be a good thing but yes I, I decided to split my attention get try to get this point get my point here finally get this um, critical point and hack away at this listening post so here now the enemy approaches with the space marine squad and one scout marine and the force commander so I get this point back and now have this one I really like how positioning them having like a little arc the enemy comes in and pew 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 I think if he wanted he could force the issue, but you see the damage is, is really high, but these Crusaders, although they are melee, don't have as much health as you would hope for. They have one health upgrade, and this translates to 280 or something uh, health, 270 health per model, which isn't super strong. And here we see now he is tier 2. I, sh I didn't notice that, but you see it here. He gets heavy bolters on the squad, which is tier 2. And I'm almost tier 2. If I would have skipped these um, Bionics, I would have been tier 2 already. I'm almost done killing this 
uh, listening post here. So maybe it is just me playing badly the, the next uh, second or two, so this opener might be uh, the way to go because the other openers I used I already lost. Um, yeah, I make a big mistake actually. You will you will see it shortly. I, I don't pay attention. He is tier two and I'm have this tier one, and I think if I position them here and then move in, I can. I can do something, but you see that they all get shredded. I, I deal some damage, but not enough. There's already a chaplain out as well. This is something I certainly didn't notice. So we have two heroes and sergeants and a rhino. So he's well into tier two, while I'm just getting now my Empire's champion and the sword brethren squad. So if I would have not um, engaged here, but let him kill this and reposition in my base I would have probably have more of a chance or all the while um, how should I say ignoring him and go for a counter attack or something so this would be probably better I also could have built a turret seeing having seen this here I could have built a turret here and give him a last cannon to kill this uh, transport and the incoming land speeders here but now as of yet I don't have any defenses around so yeah probably with this opener I could have made Black Templars work with the other openers there's uh, no way with a standard which I call standard openers which are similar to your openers um, <coughs> other Space Marine chapters too you don't have enough units out and will just you cannot take the map without um, losing too much yeah, maybe with a turret in base. So here we see the Thunderfire uh, pick up in action and you see the damage is really high. Here you see the damage on it. It sadly focuses this one and kills it. Really high damage from the pickup here. Saving me, almost saving me. <laughs> but yeah, it was costly. It was 250... Um, Requisition and some power for the Emperor's children, uh, Emperor's champion, Jesus. So, so maybe I was too harsh in my judgment about them that they are just weak. Um, they have potential if you adjust to it. You must think more of a Imperial Guard, um, kind of, in the tier one. So you want to get to tier two alive, which is also what uh, Guardsmen want to do. They don't really want to uh, fight prolonged. Uh, Prolonged tier tier one most of the time. So you want to get safely to tier two with maybe a turret, and uh, or, the, or you choose this opener where you. <laughs> I think this is the worst race because of the command uh, because of the uh, rules of control, which is a bad mechanic to be honest. Um, so think more of a being a imperial guard. You want to stay back, defend, get a turret up maybe. Or you choose this opener where you have some plasma pistols around where you can attack the enemy and force him back which kind of worked but then do not uh, try to stay too long in tier one make sure you hit tier two in a good amount of time so you can get all the benefits from tier two so given that i see what i could have done better here it's it's uh, you can always do better of course so I challenge you <coughs> to use Black Templars and win against one of the top players using them. If, if you do so, I can maybe rewind my, my, how should I say, my judgment of, of the Black Templars, but uh, as of now I find them not being not really a good faction in the early game and that's what um, one one is all about. Okay, enough of the bad things. In general, I really like the aesthetics and the uh, infantry blobbiness of them. That's really nice. They can field quite a, the, the infantry blob with all the different uh, unique, let's say, unique limited squads like the command squad they have. They have the sword rather and the terminator. So you have all this uh, one one of a kind squads then that you can field. So this is really nice. The, Hero bonuses are really nice. The, the aesthetic overall, all having this different 
buff uh, auras and whatnot around them. I really like. I also kind of like the the German accent English. <laughs> yes, yeah, probably because uh, you will hear my accent as well. So um, I, I kind of like that. I also. Uh, one of the comments uh, of the Blood Angels was that they have so bad voiceover with their broken English, Eastern European English. But I, I, I find it funny because uh, Warhammer 40k is so grim dark and over the top that having over the top voice action, voice actors kind of fits in. But enough of that. Um, I hope you enjoyed this guide. Uh, if I have forgot to tell you something, please let me know in the comments if you want to... Um, Make clear that uh, something that I told wrong and you know better, please also put in the comments. And again, I challenge you to send me a replay where you win with Black Templars against a high tier player from Unification. I really would like to see how to play them because, um, I, as I said, I wasn't like going into this, making this guide not a big fan, but then I noticed more and more how how it all fits together, you could say. So it, it all it's like a puzzle and if you have all the puzzle pieces, they become a really nice, uh, nice faction in the end. So maybe I will use them more and try to make them work. Okay, enough of that. I hope you liked the guide and as always, thanks for watching guys and see you in the next video. Bye bye.